Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, we're going to be talking about resting after your water fasting. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy, and you just become a better person. We need to start focusing more on the individual. All right, y'all. So today is a really laid back video, okay? We're going to cruise, do maybe about five, ten minutes. And we're going to get out of here. But today I want to talk about rest. We're going to be talking about resting after your fasting cycle, but we're going to be talking about resting in general, right? So I actually have like this list of videos that uh, I wanted to do. I started the list, I don't know, two, maybe two and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, there's hundreds of video ideas on there. And this is one of the first videos that I actually thought of. But because of where the channel was at the time, I was, I was like, oh, this isn't really that exciting. It probably won't get a lot of views. So I saved it. But today is literally the perfect day for me talking about it because I am literally at a point where I'm like, yo, I need to take a small break. And this is super important because uh, as I was researching, wellness uh, as it as it relates to you know whole body holistically i found i came across a lot of guys you know a lot of different healers one of the people that i came across which you guys probably know of his name was dr sabi dr sabi was a herbalist um he's well known for healing uh aids um diabetes cancer blindness uh paralysis the list goes on and on and so pretty popular guy but when i caught on to dr sabi it was towards the end of his life so he's he's passed away now i believe he passed away at 82 um under under mysterious circumstances but that's not what this video is about so one of the things that i noticed as i as i really started to get a good understanding of the, the, you know, what wellness was, what the body was capable of, and, and what we were really built for, I started understanding that age itself was a disease. So we're taught that, you know, age is something that happens, it just, you know, as time progresses, we age. But it's interesting that we age at such different rates, right? I mean, I know you guys have seen You've seen somebody and you're like, man, how old are you? And they'll be like, oh, I'm 24. And be like, wow, I thought you were 30 or something. You know, you look much older or vice versa. You might see somebody who's like 34 and you're like, you're like, wow, I thought you were 26, you know? So it's like, and you know, there's this, this idea that, that uh, melanated people age at a different rate than um, unmelanated people. You guys seem to like that term. I don't know if that's a real term or whatever, but me and Steve uh, came up with that term in, our, in our, one of our interviews. And, you know, there's this whole idea that black don't crack. But the reality is I've seen some really old looking black people who were young, <laughs> you know. So uh, maybe it might be a factor in, in helping. I don't, you know, I, maybe. I've seen some, some uh, younger white people uh, or older white people who look younger. Um, I've seen some uh, Asian people who look younger. Well, Asian people tend to, well, this particular guy, this guy is like a 54-year-old model who looks seriously like he's like 27. That dude was crazy. But anyway, my point is there's a, there's a wide range of how people look or how we perceive people versus what their age is, right? And I think that a lot of that has to do with how we take care of our body. You know, people may be prone, more prone to one way or the other, but going back to Dr. Sebi, I noticed after a while that he looked his age. I, I wouldn't say that he looked, you know, like so much older than what he was or anything, but, you know, when I compare him to how my grandpa looked and, you know, my pop-pop looked, uh, you know, when he, they, they, he looked his age, in my opinion. He didn't look really young or youthful for his age. Uh, so... You know, and a lot of people, they kind of point that out to me. They try to almost use it as a, oh, you know, Dr. Sebi's supposed to be this guy, but he looked old and he died earlier. They didn't really die early, but he died at the, the same age as, uh, you know, 
we tend to, to, to die, which is around 80. And I think that that boils down to um, one or two things. Either there was a major flaw in what he was teaching or he wasn't taking care of himself. And it could have been a little bit of both. It could have been a, a little bit of both. Maybe there was something that he, something uh, very important he missed. And on top of that, you know, you, there's a lot of stress on your body when you're when a man in his position. So people, they, they often, you know, will say things like, oh, Chris, like you're, you're picking up the torch for Sabi or you're the next Sabi, stuff like that, which, you know, I'm, I'm honored to, to be mentioned in the same breath as him. By the same token, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very big on, you know, I've, I follow my own path, but I also like to take advice from those of us who have what it is I'm looking for. So if I'm looking to learn about finances, I'm going to talk to someone who has really, who, you know, handles their finances really well. Maybe they're wealthy or whatever. And so as I'm researching, I'm always pulling bits and pieces from, you know, different individual stuff I like. And then the things I don't like, I just discard it. That's it. And I noticed that, you know, Sabi looked his age and I didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't want to look my age at 80. I always, wanted to look younger. I want to continue. I think I look younger than I am now. And I want to continue to look younger um, as time goes on. Like, oh, you know, I'm 34 now. And so, you know, people mistake me for 25 and 26. I've said that before. When I'm, when I'm 50, I want to look like I'm still 30. I want people to be like, how old are you? You're like 36? I'm like, nah, I'm 50. What? You know, I, I love that. I think that's such a fun reaction to get from people. And the important thing, I think one of the important things in achieving that outside of all the, all the health stuff is taking time to rest. Now, when you come off of your fast, rest is dumb important because what we really, well, first of all, rest on your fast is important. But when you come off of your fast, you also need to continue to, you know, make time to rest. It's, it's part of the restoration process. It's part of the healing pot process. Anybody who's in any type of fitness or weightlifting or anything like that knows that rest is just as, and most experts will probably tell you it's more important than, you know, going hard because um, that's when all of the, the building happens. That's when, you know, all of the gains happen, right? So, it's the same thing with fasting. It's the same thing with detoxing. Uh, if you all are familiar with the liver and, uh, uh, liver and gallbladder flush by Andreas Moritz, and you've been practicing that, and you read the book per my suggestion, then you understand that when you do that type of detox, it's very stressful for the body. He likens it into you know, light surgery. And I can definitely stand as a testament for that because... I pushed, I purposely pushed my body after I did the liver and uh, gallbladder flush just to see. I'm very big on testing, testing and experiencing and experimenting. And I can tell you <laughs> that I definitely felt the, the, the strain on my body. Um, in general, for me, because of right, like what, what's happening right now, I don't know if you guys have heard, but I just launched our fasting academy it's called the aha fasting academy a h a fasting academy.com and essentially what it is is a place where i'm taking all the information that i've learned uh, a lot of the information i put on youtube and i'm putting it in easily digestible courses and it's all kind of in chronological order it's designed to walk you a to z uh you know down this wellness journey and make things very easy because there's a lot of pitfalls. There's a lot of stuff <clears throat> to look out for. I was speaking to a young lady today and we were talking about water, one of my favorite topics. She noticed my water bottle here. As you guys know, I've got these water bottles. Um, and if you're interested in one, I'll leave the link in the description box. But uh, basically, she was just intrigued. And then we had a whole conversation about water, different waters, alkaline water, canyon water. Uh, you know, electrolytes, stuff like that. 
she was literally just talking to me about how confusing it is. And she's wondering, is she, gonna, is she getting ripped off from you know, using the different waters and, and things like that? And, and so, you know, I, me personally, it took me, it took me probably a good year or so to settle on the type of water I wanted to use, what the process was. And I spent literally thousands of dollars. People think that I just say that, like, no, like I, I literally, I bought all types of different devices. Because in order to talk about something confidently, I, I want to experience it. So I experience as much as I can. I put my money where my mouth is. And so when I speak to you all, I speak from a place of experience. And I've, I've bundled all of that up, you know, years worth of that, uh, years worth of helping people closely work with people. I put it all in one place. And uh, we've started this academy. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. There's people are very motivated, great energy. AHA owns the platform 100%. So um, getting back to rest. So with all of that being said, I remember seeing Dr. Sebi talk a couple times. He, he spoke about how uh, he, well, he was, he was dealing with Lisa Lopez, uh, left eye, Lisa left eye Lopez or left eye Lisa, I don't know. Y'all know, TLC, Lisa. So uh, he was helping her get over a disease and he realized, well, she brought to his attention that he wasn't taking care of himself. And I assume that that trend never really stopped because he continued to age. And I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that guy. You know, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to kill myself for this journey of helping others. It's important that I take care of myself. And I tell you all, all the time, be selfish when it comes to your wellness journey. And I mean that, and I'm going to be selfish too. So this, uh, this weekend, I'm taking a couple of days off to just sit back. It's been, it's, I don't, rem I don't remember the last time I took a vacation. I'm not doing like a vacation, uh, but I'm just going to take a couple of days to rest and relax, to breathe, you know, um, pamper myself. If you want to call it that, you know, go swimming, get out in the sun, wash my car, stuff like that, man. Just, just, just hang out, relax and enjoy myself. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you all do the same. You know, you don't have to wait as long as I did. Uh, obviously, you know, I've, I've got, I've got a lot going on. So I don't, I don't really, I don't really feel comfortable kind of disconnecting myself. Uh, but yeah, it needs to be done every once in a while. So as you're going through your wellness journey, you're doing these flushes, you're doing the fasting, you're doing the proper eating. Don't forget to take a step back. You know, admire the work that you've done, admire the progress you've made and the milestones you've hit and, and, and take a second to enjoy it. You know, be selfish, have some fun, relax, get out in the sun, just don't do anything, you know, whatever it is, um, whatever you enjoy doing, take time to do that. Make that a regular part of your life. Make I, now outside of me taking a vacation or, or, you know, even taking a few couple of days to just kind of unplug. I have always made time to at least rest from my week. And uh, I have a very busy week. I do. And I think a lot of us can make excuses for why we don't have time to do this, that, and the other. But I think in, in the grand scheme of things, we always make time for our priorities, whatever we, whatever we de determine as a priority. Make resting and relaxation a priority. Because what is the point of doing all of this stuff if you're not taking care of yourself holistically, if you're still dealing with, you know, stress, mental stress, if you're, if you're dealing with physical stress, remember, remember that fasting does stress the body. Okay. That's the reason why we get a lot of the detox symptoms and stuff like that is you're stressing the body. Stress can be good. It can be bad. Stress in, in large quantities for the wrong reasons, bad. Stress in large quantities for the right reason. Okay, good. Stress in large quantities over an extended period of time for any reason, bad, right? So give your body a break. Give your mind a break. Take a day. Rest. Smell the flowers. I mean, genuinely go outside and like, it, you know, maybe find yourself an area that's got like some trees and some flowers and enjoy the flowers. I do. I have a patio out back and there's a tree that, that has these beautiful purple flowers that blooms every year. And they smell, they smell amazing. It's, 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 it's incredible how, you know, such little stuff like that it just has such an impact, or at least on me, 
because I never paid attention to that stuff before. Like, um, I feel like our world has so much to offer and we focus on the negative so much. And, and when you focus on the negative so much, everything feels negative and dark and, and wrong. It, you know, there's two sides to every coin. There was, someone posted, uh, um, I guess it was like a meme on Facebook. And the meme was a picture of a family, uh, like an, an entire family, like a nuclear family. They were together outside their car with like their luggage on the car or whatever. I don't know if they were taking a trip or if they were moving, but the meme was pretty much saying, um, I miss the days when families used to stick together like this, right? So the meme is, is, is supposedly pointing out the fact that nowadays families don't stick together in, this, in the same way that they did whenever this picture supposedly was taken. And I, I understand where the original post is coming from. I get it. I get it. But, you know, and I don't really usually get into stuff like this, but I posted on it. I was like, you know, my family, we're, we, we stick together. Like, we got each other's back. And it wasn't to boast or be like, yeah, we're better or something. It was just to point out the fact that, you know, because um, a lot of people in the comment sections, they were like, facts, 100%. Like, yeah. And I'm just like, why are we celebrating this negativity? There are plenty of families, plenty of families that stay together. There's plenty of fathers who take care of his children. There's plenty of mothers who are there to nurture their, her, her, her children. Um, there's plenty of siblings who look out for each other. But we're inundated with the negative stuff. The media and everything, society tends to glorify the negative stuff. So we downplay the positive stuff. I, I would be willing to bet that there's probably more families that get along than not. But since the ones that don't get along are highlighted so greatly, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's almost entertainment to a degree that we don't, we completely overlook that actually things are a lot better than what it seems like. Now that may not be your reality. And, 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 you know, I got into a small back and forth with um, one of the people on the post because of that. And I had a feeling that would happen, but I wasn't looking to stir up trouble. I just wanted to shine some light on a dark situation. It's like, if your family isn't that, work towards it. And if, if, you, if you feel like you're doing everything in your power to work towards it, hey, man, sometimes that's just the breaks. You know, I'm not here to tell everybody, no matter what, you could save every relationship and stuff like that. Because, uh, you know, I don't, I, it's possible, but it takes two, right? You know, relationships between more than one person. So if one person wants to try and the other one doesn't, then it's not going to work out. And I've experienced my fair share of that as well. But, you know, if you have two parties who are willing to work it out, we all are going to have disagreements and things like that. But if you're willing to work it out, you can figure it out, man. You know, there's always a way to, to, to figure it out and, and handle things in a way where you can move forward in a positive way, or, or at least find some common ground. So, I promise this wouldn't be too long. I probably went over 10 minutes. I, I can't help myself, guys. Check out the AHA Fasting Academy. It's amazing. You guys have been asking me for it. Um, it's available now, and I will be adding more to it in the future. We have some really, really exciting stuff coming, uh, some games. I mean, we've got um, points. We've got a little point system we're developing where you can earn badges, and we're going to be we're gonna be giving you discount and exclusive content. I mean, there's so much to come. It's more, it's, it's so much more. It's a community that we're building that we own. And it's, it's, it's just a good, good energy. Thank you all for all of the support. The, the channel has been growing rapidly. Uh, welcome to all of the new subscribers. If you haven't already checked out our Facebook page, it's amazing. Um, for those who don't know, we've got an Instagram page. We've got a Facebook business page as well. We've got a website, uh, healthyalternative.org. Uh, we've got Patreon. If you guys are, are blessed by the information that I do give away on a healthy alternative, then you can also join Patreon where I do have some exclusive content and you guys can donate and just be part of the, the insider club over there. Uh, I, that's all I got for you today. Um, as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I will see you guys next time. What?